Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric at precision-elec or precision-elect.com. We're your industrial automation service center, drives, motors, automation, PLCs, you name it, we do it and have done it for almost 30 years. So make sure you swing by and check us out. Now today's video, we're gonna be covering an advanced topic for the SM Vector Variable Frequency Drive. The SM Vector Variable Frequency Drive is capable of a lot of advanced features. It's one of the nice things about the drive. It can do very basic applications, but it can also do more advanced ones. In this particular case, we're gonna be doing a PID loop. For those of you who don't know what a PID loop is, is essentially, let's say you've got a pump or an air compressor. But for our sake, we're gonna stick with pump because water just tends to be easier to work with. Let's say you've got a tank that you wanna maintain a certain level of water in at all times or at any given time. If this tank is normally this tall and you want it half full, let's say you want to keep it half full all the time. So if I start to empty the tank, I want my pump or my motor to speed up as I lose more and more water. If I get further and further away from my target, I want it to go faster and faster. As I get closer to my level or my target level in my tank, I want it to kind of ease into it or kind of slow down a little bit until it hits my halfway point. A PID loop takes a sensor which detects your level, it could be a 0 to 10 volt signal or a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, which tells you how much water is in the tank, and the drive monitors that level, and it responds accordingly based on speed. So it either speeds up because it's really far away from your target, or it's slowing down because it's getting really close to your target level. It's the same thing with air compressors. Let's say you've got a target pressure, so as you got 0 to 100 pounds of air pressure and you want 70 pounds. So as you get further and further away from that 70 pounds, it's dropping lower and lower, maybe to 40 pounds, you want your compressor motor to speed up a lot quicker so that it can start to build up that pressure quicker and get try to get you back to that 70 pounds. So there's a few elements to this that we're gonna cover. There's our feedback signal, which would be, in our case, show the level of the tank, the level of water in the tank, and I'm gonna be using this speed pot to represent that water level. Right now we're at five, so we're at 50%. So this is a sensor I would have connect to my water tank to show me the actual level of the water. And then I also have my set point, which I would set at my keypad, so my target. So this is my actual, it's my actual level of water, and my keypad is like how much water I actually want in the tank. So I may have this set at 50 or 70% of the level of the tank. And lastly, I need a digital input that will tell my drive that I am looking at my sensor for PID control. So I need some way to tell the drive or turn on, I could even use a jumper, but we are gonna program an input to tell the drive we are in PID control so that it knows to look at this input from your tank or your, or your air compressor, wherever, whatever you might be maintaining. Those aren't your only two applications for PID, by the way. You basically need to tell the drive that we're in PID control. So let's go ahead and get it wired and programmed and then we'll uh, show you in action. Okay, so to get started, we're actually gonna be looking at section 3.2.3 in our manual for control terminals. And we need to install first a jumper between one and four, that's gonna be our drive enable. I did put that jumper in there. Four is our common, and I'm gonna wire four to one side of my selector switch, and on the other side of my selector switch, I'm gonna wire it into 13A. 13A, as I had mentioned earlier, is a programmable input, and this is the input that when I flip my switch, it's gonna close the connection between four and 13A, and it's gonna tell my drive, after I program it, that I'm in PID control. Now the last part of wiring is essentially your analog input. So whatever signal wiring you have coming back from your sensor, typically it's only gonna be two wires. Since I'm using a speed pod, I'm using three wires. We're gonna use terminals five and six for your signal I'm sorry, two and five, let me get that correct. Two and five for a zero to 10 volt signal. Two will be your common and five will be your signal. And you'll wanna power your actual sensor separately from the drive. You wanna have a separate DC power supply. You do not want to power your signal, uh, your signal sensor from this drive. It's a very, very low current power supply and you'll risk overloading your drive if you attempt to power your signal from, your sensor from the drive itself. So just make sure you don't use six to power your external sensor. Right now I said I'm using it because I'm just using a speed pot so there's no actual power going to the sensor. But uh, you're just gonna bring in two and five. Those are your zero to 10 volt. 
And if you're using a four to 20 milliamp signal, then you're not gonna use two and five, you're actually gonna use two, which is again, your common, and 25. 25 is gonna be your four to 20 milliamp signal coming from your sensor. Now those are really the only wiring sections you need set up. So since I've got my input wired, I'm gonna to have to program that first. Let's start again in our manual. Let's go to parameter 121. 121 is a programmable input program. And for TB13A digital input, right now it's set to zero. Here is where I'm gonna set my actual auto reference for where I wanna do my set point. So in other words, I'm telling the drive with parameter 121 what I wanna look at for my PID set point reference. Now I can get that reference from a network connection, I can get it from a preset, I can get it from a separate analog input, but for our demonstration, we're just gonna get that from our keypad. So we're actually gonna set parameter 121 to six. So let me press the menu button. I'm gonna to go to 121 and I'm gonna set that to six. I'm gonna press enter. So that tells the drive when I switch over to 13A to look at the keypad for my reference. Now we haven't turned on the PID yet. We're gonna do that next. Let's go back to our manual and we're gonna to go to parameter 200. Flip through a couple pages. As I said before, we do everything in the manual here. Now I've got a few PID modes I can actually use. I've got disabled, which is default. Normal acting basically says that as I get further from my signal, speed up the motor. Um, but as I get, if I wanna have it be reverse acting, I can actually have it, have it slow down as I get further away. Just depends on what my, my application is. In my instance, as my tank gets more and more empty, in other words, I lose more and more water if I get further away from my set point, I'm gonna want normal acting because I want it to run faster as I get further away. So in other words, as I lose more and more water, I don't want the motor to slow down, I want it to speed up. Now reverse acting would do the opposite of that. Now I can also do normal acting bi-directional, which means that if for some reason my signal goes in the opposite direction from my set point, in other words, if I overshoot, maybe my tank gets too full, and my set point's 50 and I get 70, I can actually have the motor run in the opposite direction to empty water. So that's one option as well. But in my case, I don't need it to try to empty water. I have a one-way pump. I don't have a bi-directional pump. So I'm still gonna set mine to normal acting. So let me go to parameter 200, go up, 200, and we're gonna set that to one, press enter, and that turns on PID mode. My next parameter I need to set is actually parameter 201, that's my feedback source, and that's my signal that my actual water level's coming from. In my case, like I said, I'm using a speed pot, so I'm gonna use this zero to 10 volt DC, but you wanna select whatever your sensor's set up for, and again, I press 201 and I set one, which is zero to 10 volts DC. Other than that, I can get a little more customizations in here. I can say I want my PID decimal point to be a little bit further out. I can say I want my PID units to be a little further. I can even in parameter 204 and 205 change my range. Right now, by default, the SM vector is set up for zero to 100%, which is good for my tank, right? So let's say my sensor goes to empty to full. Zero to 100 will work for me. So I can just say zero to 100 is 0% full to 100% full. But if let's say I don't have 100% on my tank, let's say it's 60 hertz or 60%, or maybe let's just say 60 gallons, maybe I want it to display gallons, I can have it go from zero to 60 gallons. So I'd set 205 to 60 and 204 to zero. This is real popular, setting these ranges is real popular for pressures too, because your sensor may be 40 pounds to like 120 pounds. So you can actually set your range or your, your target range on that. So in my case, I'm actually gonna set that 205 back to 100 because I like the zero to 100%, plus it matches my speed pot, which is zero to 10. So that'll make our demonstration a little cleaner. And then that puts us at a complete configuration of our PID loop. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is turn on PID mode. Now when I flip this switch, the screen actually flashed PID and it actually shows a little light in the top left corner for auto, which means auto reference keypad. 
Next, I'm gonna actually start my motor. Notice nothing actually happens. Well, that's because I actually have my set point set at 50%, and right now my actual tank is 50%. Now let's say I turn on a valve, and I actually start shooting out all the water from my tank, and I start to lose pressure. Well, as you can see, as I get less and less water in my tank, the motor speeds up more and more. And if my tank is completely empty, it'll actually run at full speed. Now as that water level continues to build up and gets closer and closer to my target again, it's gonna start slowing down until it finally reaches that set point, which in my case was 50%. Now let's say I wanna actually have 70% of my tank full. All I need to do is, since I set it to auto reference keypad, is I can set it to 70% instead. Notice that the motor took off right away because it realized that, hey, I'm only at 50% and now I need to be at 70%. So now the motor is going to run as fast as it can, depending on how far away it is from the signal, until it gets closer and closer to that 70% full. And that's really all there is to it. We've pretty much set up a complete PID loop. And every time my tank empties, and every time it starts to fill, it's going to always respond the same way, and it's always going to try to hit that set point. Uh, mine's set up to start from the keypad, so I press the start button here first to actually start the motor. You may have a start push button. Again, all that's set in earlier videos. We talked about basic start stop control. Um, and also when I turn this off, since I'm no longer doing an auto reference keypad and, P and PID control, it's actually gonna drop to whatever my default speed was at parameter 101, which was just my standard keypad control for speed control. So I can actually switch between, it's kind of cool, I can actually switch between normal, like this is my manual override Let's say for some reason my sensor started, my sensor broke, and I can't maintain that water level anymore. So I can just actually shut this off, and I'm in manual mode now. I can just run the, run the pump as fast as I want, and then just press the stop button when I'm done. See what I mean? Then when I get my sensor back up and running, I can turn my PID control on again, turn on the drive, and it's going to attempt to maintain, see, once my level's down it'll run back in PID control again. So you can actually set it up to switch between manual control and PID control. Very popular for uh, water and pump applications because it, there's a lot of instances where you just for some reason need to override and run your pump manually. So that's all there is to this video. Uh, essentially, that's how you set up a PID control for, uh, in this case, we just did a generic one and I used this as my feedback sensor. But again, pumps, pressure, Pretty much uh, wire tensioners, in other words, if you need to maintain a certain tension tensioner. Uh, a lot of applications use this kind of idea, that's why they just call it PID. But essentially any kind of application where you have some kind of a feedback telling the drive, I need to hit this target, and you have to have it speed up or slow down as it gets close to it, will fit for a PID control application. If you have any questions at all, we've been doing this for well over 30 years. We are Precision Electric, your industrial automation service center. Drives, motors, controls, automation, PLCs, we pretty much do it all. We have done it all for about 30 years, like I said, in a 300 mile radius of where we are. And we also do uh, nationwide. So if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call and uh, we'll get you taken care of. Thanks for stopping by.